Yeah, I see. Then on red four, we have Sento, Rachna, Sergio, John Miller, Lopez, and Franco. All right. There we go. All right. Mine just fully transitioned. Uh, hope everyone is doing okay. I'm with Barbarian, and this is ESM. Uh, it is a 6v6 match. Uh, Barb already went through to talk about the two teams, so we'll see how everything goes, and <laughs> we'll hopefully we'll... Uh, Yep. Not have any more technical so, issues. Looks like my script's <laughs> working, though, thankfully. So. Oh, hell yeah. Good to hear. So, yeah, uh, this is, like they said, this is 6v6. Mm -hmm. uh, this is multi-life, first to 30 minutes, or first to five captures from either side. Um, and, yeah, so we're already starting to have first blood there, uh, Keeling getting blood on Sento. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're starting to see the two teams engage around this midpoint here. And Seals, they are new to ESM. Uh, they have not, uh, I don't believe they have played in a tournament. Uh, meanwhile, 16th AA, they are a Killing bit more getting two kills uh, there. veteran. Mm -hmm. Oh, good double kill, yeah, from Keeling there. And McPherson on the other side, uh, making a hole, trying to push through, but John's going to catch him mm -hmm. out. But anyway, uh, again, can we go over the blue four and op four teams, if you don't mind, Barbarian, just to break them down? 
Absolutely. So it's very basic, much more simple than FNF. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone is able to choose whatever weapons they want. On mm -hmm. blue four, we have McPherson, Ben, Hog, Keeling, Flanagan, and Duke. And on red four for seals, we have Sento, Rachnus, Sergio, John Miller, Lopez, and Franco. And Keeling really doing uh, some good work. Already seeing him with three kills pushing mm -hmm. on that northern side. And the thing with uh, ESM CTF is that it is very quick uh, time to kill and a very quick respawn. So do not be surprised if people drop in one or two bullets. Mm -hmm. These are 30 minute rounds. It is vanilla only and it's multi-life. Uh, captured a flag base, Blue Force trying to take Op Force flag, Fla Op Force trying to take Blue Force and bring it back. Killing, trying to listen for footsteps there, but Roncos is able to catch him out and eliminate yeah, him. Yeah, that was an interesting play there. Otherwise, we're just trying to watch this match go through. Uh, Miller trying to catch around uh, and take out Flanagan. And we'll see how this is. Oop, Flanagan turned around, taking out John Miller as he tries to get him flanked. But as Barb was saying, the choice of weaponry is up to the individual player. So any of the vanilla rifles are up for grabs, be it the MX 6.5, uh, the vanilla, I think, HK416. Yes. But otherwise, that is all we have uh, for the weapon choice there. But either way, uh, the map choice here seems to be the storage yard within Charkia. As uh, there's a little bit of custom buildup on both sides as well to help balance things out. Uh, some vanilla assets mixed in with a lot of built-up ones. So you have a lot more storage crates around. But otherwise, both sides, you see uh, their spawn areas, which is the blue area for Blue 4. Op 4 has the Op 4 spawn. And then you have the flag markers. But, you know, it's only about a few hundred meters in distance here. Yes, very short, very uh, small AOs, meant to be very arena mm -hmm. and high action. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it looks like some of my viewers are saying there's a little bit of buffering issues. That, I guess, is just onto my internet because everything else, I mean, is the same as is. Yeah, OBS you is saying like I'm you're coming in fine. OBS is saying I'm coming in at seven and a half kilobytes a second, which I think might be the issue because it's supposed to be hard capped at six K. So it might be coming out with too much information that uh, Twitch servers aren't able to handle. That's why you're getting a bit of buffering. So uh, during our break, I will try to amend that issue. But I'm pretty sure that's just an input issue with Twitch. And I guess my OBS is putting up too much. So I'll try to fix that later. But I've been noticing the same people being super aggressive here. You've got Hog and Ben for Blue 4 as well as Duke playing defense around their flag. Whereas Op4 seems to have Lopez, Franco, and Miller doing it, but we're still seeing the same three names from both sides going at it in the center. Uh, Sergio, mm -hmm. Sento, and Rockness for Op4, and then Keeling, Flanagan, and uh, McPherson for Blue 4. So both sides playing a pretty big mirror match here. Uh, Flanagan, I think, is going to hear Sergio's footsteps immediately yep. headshots him uh, and then comes player. around again. But otherwise, I mean, it's a great use of just trying to listen for your enemy, uh, hold still, try to watch a corner, but if you hear those footsteps, immediately turn around and take them out. Uh, Rockness getting taken out by Hog there, another good defensive play, but immediately I see Flanagan taken out. So if both sides continue to push three on three uh, while they're keeping the other half of their player base on defense, I think we're going to see a pretty nastily drawn out stalemate unless one of the sides gets lucky and is able to take out multiple players from one side or the other. So. Yeah, so what I'm seeing from uh, Seals is that we're seeing Franco uh, stay back and play defensive. He's trying to keyhole the flag there from mm -hmm. that window. And he has a decent angle, but those red crates right in front of him are a very obvious and glaring blind spot. Mm -hmm. And if he's the only one playing defense, no, Lopez is also playing defense if he's got the other side. So we just had Miller uh, miss ID and kill his buddy Sento there. This might be one that of the happens. opportunities McPherson was looking for. As I was stating earlier, he's going to get really close to this flag, potentially having two more defenders to go against. If he turns right, he'll see Rackness and Sergio. But at this point, you want to ignore as many players as you can. Use the route that you came in to pull back. Hog might be able to be in a position to assist. But again, it's going to really be against Lopez and Franco here for McPherson. I'm not sure if he'll be able to get this. He got Sento coming out. 
Yeah, and so Sento, if he comes down this way... Hawk gets taken out by Sergio. Sento yes. spots McPherson and takes him out, and that is nice blue job. for Repulsed. So, I mean, it's going to continue to be a stalemate in the center here. you got Keeling coming around on the south. He's been doing pretty good. Might catch Sento out of position on this corner. He attempts to, and he gets the kill. Lopez coming around, though. Keeling in a middle of attack reload. Managed to get the magazine in. Uh, Keeling gets crippled and then flanked by another direction. That was Miller coming around on the southern side of the map. All right. Not bad. Not bad at all there. John Miller coming around on yeah. the southern side. Flanagan trying to come around. Meanwhile, on the northern side, you just had Sergio get taken out by Hog. Miller and Flanagan bypassing each other. Uh, Miller back neither back. turning around. This is the fog of war. Miller now focused on trying to kill McPherson. Yeah, Flanagan right, hears those shots he and go, kills him. Nicely Hillary done. Hillary Clinton, two shots to the back of the head. I ruled it as a suicide. Uh, but otherwise, now Op4 only has one guy towards the flag location. I mean, with these first few minutes, you got both sides, you know, balanced in the play of offense and defense. I think whoever starts committing more forces from defense on the offense first is going to have an early advantage, might be able to take the first flag point, and then if they play balanced for the rest of the game, I think they'll be able to win this round. Uh, but otherwise, Hog repelling this northern attack by Ock 4 Sento, Sento coming, coming around. Side, yeah. Hog but immediately runs the cover. I don't think he heard sure. Sento, but he's going to hurt Sento firing here. Uh, he takes out Duke only for Hog to take him out. Keeling was also in position in case Hog went down. And then you got Flanagan also getting up to this corner. I've been noticing Blue 4 has been a bit more aggressive and successful in their pushes, getting on top of the flag a little more often. Yeah, real quick, Flanagan just takes out Lopez. He's in a fight mm -hmm. with John Miller here. Franco's uh, the only other defender. We're starting to see the reinforcements come in from the spawn, though, so mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be quick to find a defensive spot if they want to try Blue4 has to push the position. rest of their forces up, get that front line. They might be able to take the flag here. Keeling Ooh, getting Rockness. taken out by Rockness. Nice, yeah. Yeah, Rockness got crippled there, too, so he was able to uh, keep his composure. Very nice. Miller about to come around. Flanagan camps that corner, takes him out. He immediately starts pushing. Franco is stuck in a grenade loop as Flanagan comes around. Three shooters on Flanagan. The grenade ends up getting a McPherson flanking Sento. Lopez trying to get a shot on Ferson, but Lopez gets taken out. McPherson running to get the flag. Franco camping that corner. No, Franco is dead. Rock is coming around. Rockness is able to stop McPherson there. Very close call, but at least Blue 4 is getting the touches on the flag. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Rockin' is getting yeah, shot in the back by Hog. Really close there from, mm -hmm. from McPherson. If he, um, if he got that last kill, score, he would have been able to run it back home free. Most likely, yeah. But it, even if he was able to touch it, that's what the thing, the deal is with ESM CTF, is that even uh, touching the flag and getting it into your team's hands uh, does count towards yep. overall total. Of course, captures and scoring it is worth more, but if it's uh, a tie, then it'll go to... It'll go to whoever it. touches it. But yeah, I don't think they even got the touch because I'm not seeing... No, uh, a point no, tally on there. There was a yeah. There, there would have been a pop up. You would have known. Mm -hmm. Very very close. Keeling getting taken out by John Miller. John Miller though immediately gets flanked and eliminated by Duke. Uh, now Op4 doing a little bit of a counter push, taking it to the middle. Sergio just got a kill on Ferson. Cemento might be able to come around and get a kill on Duke if he fully clears that corner. He's going to fully clear it, and he gets the shot and kill on Duke as Duke was trying to eliminate Rockness. Now we've got three Op4 guys coming up. Flanagan might catch Rockness out of position here, though. Yes, he will. Yes, he it's will. It's a great so Flanagan, drop. going to push back to try and uh, chase Sento, I think. I think he's going to think but... that Rockness was the shooter there, and then we have Hog coming into the AO. Again, getting right on top of the flag position. Yeah, that time he gets it. He did get the touch. All right, so Blue 4 getting one touch there. If it still stays 0-0 zero, zero for the rest of the match, Blue 4 will win the round. I believe, again, yep. Blue 4 is 16 AA and Op 4 is um, ESM. ESM. Yes. Or ESP. ESP. ESP, ESP Spania, seals? Not ESM. Gotcha. Because they're a uh, Spanish community, correct? That's what Espana means. Yes, I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We don't have, I don't cover that many Spanish communities. Rocket going over, it's an HE round. A little high, McPherson trying to go again for the flag to get the touch, unable to grab it. And you have... Sergio there, almost getting the blue flag there. Gets mm. to, right to the flagpole, but... Unable uh, to get the there touch there. Barracks, yeah, stops him. 
So one thing I want to bring up just quickly for my stream, I do have a custom color pack. I've always had it. Uh, you don't really see it in Arma except when you're buying all these uh, crates, which is why it looks a little more colorful on my perspective than the average Arma game. But continuing, what's Franco shooting at? Was he shooting at uh, Rockness and about a friendly fire, or was that I just a uh, misregistered? It was a bit of um, yeah, mm -hmm. friendly fire there. Rockness is actually shooting. Gets down taken out by Hog. Hog. Yeah. They were firing through that little plus wheel in between them, so a little bit of a keyhole there. Uh, John Miller getting right on top of the flag is able to kill Flanagan. Ben in a really great corner camp, though, on the second story of that barracks. Not sure if Miller's going to know this is coming, but that is a really, really good spot that's going to take off for a little bit of time to figure out. Uh, the only counter I could think of that they could have to grab that is... Probably the throw a smoke grenade, but even then you got McPherson right on top of the flag position as well, trying to bide yep. his time. Ooh, I, Miller. Neither Miller nor Flanagan can get it. Miller throws a grenade. I don't know where it went. Tries to flank around. Miller overturns. Very doesn't nice. realize Flanagan fell back into the shed right there, and he was taken out. Meanwhile, McPherson coming up here. Oh, so he gets one, but gets winged in the process. So he's going to have to step back. Yep, and, and then Franco gets so. McPherson. Yep. But here comes Hog around the backside. Uh, so I think Op4... For... Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I don't think he heard where Franco was, so he's going to touch the flag. Mm -hmm. Franco hears the steps. And again, get another some... touch there for yep. Blue 4. But gets the touch. Meanwhile, Op4 trying to flank around and get into the barracks building, but that attack was clipped, uh, quickly stopped by Flanagan and Ben. So again, we're seeing Blue 4 just slightly more aggressive here. 16 AA getting a little bit uh, ahead of ESP, but still a lot of time in this round. Uh, we've still got 13 and a half minutes out of the 30, and we could see Op 4 bounce back because I think they're starting to wise up to that barracks building because that stopped them from touching the flag twice. And usually that's been Blue 4's only defender on the flag because we've seen Blue 4 16 AA transition into being very aggressive here. Uh, Rockness immediately getting picked off by Hog. Yeah, he was being really aggressive on his own and mm -hmm. Hog just gets him out of position. I would say for an event like this, you got to make sure you have no one immediately together because then they're probably going to you know get both killed at the same time. John Miller taken out by Flanagan there. But you still have to keep people within, I want to say, 10 or 20 meters to at least be in positions to support each other. You want to go in kind of as a battle line, uh, pushing the enemy's defenses until you can get on top of the flag while the other half of the battle line distracts them. But, I mean, as I'm saying that, we have Hog and Flanagan cutting through what Op4 is sending up, and this is just showing you why 16AA on Blue 4 are doing slightly better than Op4. It's because in those 1v1s, Blue 4 is just slightly more accurate with their shooting. And I'm kind of seeing that around, you know, where I'm seeing Op4 kind of sprinting ahead, you know, trying to get forward. Blue 4 are instead going guns up. They're crouching. They're listening for footsteps. And because Op4 is sprinting, they have their weapon shouldered, and they're unable to get their guns up in time to get a shot on players like Hog here. I think Hog just saw uh, Sento, hmm. but Sento then poked his head out and took him out. Go ahead. Yeah, good shot there. Um, it's kind of a negative feedback loop because, yeah, Red 4... You know, they die and they respawn and mm -hmm. they start sprinting up because they want to, especially the people and who are really gets killed. Mm -hmm. Sergio, uh, Sento, etc. So they're very aggressive out the gate and trying Larry, to close that distance I'll and reclaim that ground. Um, and yeah, they just end up running into the blue forward guys who are um, holding a position and the whole process starts over again. Over again excuse me. I do so, find yeah. it's uh, a little hard to, uh, you know, follow individual players here. I'm trying to keep more of a bird's eye view because just everywhere along this large battle line, you're seeing contact. But we have Sento coming up to the north here. Miller, I think, is about to catch Keeling on the rear here. Keeling turns around. Might have just seen John Miller's gun. Miller didn't think to turn left. And Keeling actually just got very lucky with that. Now going into cover. Took a bit of damage as Rockness tries to pop him. But McPherson Ooh, gets Rockness McPherson in the back. saving Keeling there. Now you got Sergio coming up, but again, Blue 4 has just had better map control in the center, and because they showed aggression with more players early on making that transition from 3 on defense and 3 on offense to like 4, even 5 on offense. Actually, I think for now we're seeing a transition. It's 4 on offense, 2 on defense, 
were uh, able to just see, again, blue four in positions where they're not op like right next to each other, but again, within a few dozen meters or so to support each other in case they get pinned down and then let a teammate come in and get the kill. Oh, here uh, we go. Lopez and Sento now pushing up on Keeling. Mm -hmm. If Keeling can stop these two from pushing this way, that could be big. Meanwhile, McPherson gets the kill on Arachnus there. Hog and McPherson going to go for that. Uh, Keeling's going to hear Sento's footsteps. Yep, running the, along that outside perimeter. McPherson it's and right. John trying to get each other. Yep, Sento went down. Uh, Lopez, I think, just got... No. Oh. They just trade? Yes, they did. Yeah, that happens sometimes. So you got Hog in position here. He gets Franco. Oh, no Sergio one's covering here. the flag. Keely needs to watch his rear. Quickly turns around, tries to get oh, Sergio. The, the they trade. Blue Four oh, might be able trade. to get the flag here. Hog gets the yeah, flag. He He's it. running for it. This could be it. He's going to have a yep, Flanagan, Flanagan right behind him to cover. Ooh, Flanagan immediately goes down, but it Rackness. slows Great down Rackness a bit, so Hog can double time it out of here. And again, there's no A, so uh, I don't think they have any Bino, so there's no way to do triple time. You're forced to only do double time here. So Hog yep. making his way back. I think he's got it, though. Uh, I do like that Duke and Ben, they're not going to come uh, out to play Rackness defense here. here. Flank. He might catch it. I think he caught an angle and just saw that flag. Mm -hmm, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, Duke mm, and Ben playing I defense. Think so, no. I, I think 16 AA is going to get the first uh, score here. Yeah, if Rockness comes this way, he's still going to. Yep, Brock even doesn't even matter. Hog's going to get it. First score. There's the capture. So, uh, nice. by the way, on the interface I have up top, uh, the bigger number represents how many points they've uh, gotten in terms of flag captures, then the smaller number right below represents the touches. Otherwise, Rockness did his best. He got Hog. I think Keeling then got him. Sento then got dropped by Keeling. Duke, I mean, both. I, I'm going to be honest, though. Blue 4, I feel like, has the slightly better angles for defense. Duke uh, on that one little slit right there. Ben on the second story of the barracks covering that other area. He's really just nasty with Op it. Op 4, I mean, they don't have as good of an angle to cover. I mean, I do see a few places where they can go, but it feels a little more constricted. You know, a little closer to the flag. Um, so I think it's just a little tougher, but there are multiple rounds, right? Yeah, so there are, it's two halves, and whoever has more points at the end of the two match or two rounds wins. And if there's a tie, there, um, then it goes to the tiebreakers. Mm -hmm. So both sides, it's on how many points you can get cumulatively. So if one sli side is slightly better than the other, you have to capitalize on that more mm -hmm. than the round you were defending it. So I think that's actually a yes. fairly balanced system. It gives both people an equal chance to do as well as they can, but it shows the... PvP. It showcases that yep. and how skilled one side is compared to the other. I actually really like that system. Yeah, and we've had multi life. Because um, I, uh, I ran no predictions this framework with, for TMTM once and I did a tournament oh. with all of them. Oh, and it was great. Mm -hmm. um, they all used double barrels at the end. Of course uh, they did. Shackens. It was fucking awesome. Oh, uh, so McPherson yeah, and Sento really trading. Great. Sento got a great shot on, I believe it was Hog coming around and taken out. Meanwhile, uh, 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 Keeling. Real quick. Yeah. Just to finish the thought, um, yeah, the two half system really works well mm -hmm. um, to weed out um, imbalanced maps because if we see one side getting 5 0'd every single time the map yeah. is played, uh, then they know how uh, that it needs to be worked on. And so at this point, they've gotten some really good maps. Lopez trying to push up, getting pretty close to the flag, but I think is. Yeah, he's looking for an opening. He wants to get a pick before he keeps moving up. Mm -hmm. So, again, Op4 going aggressive on the north, but I think one of the weaknesses we're seeing in Op4 is look at how they're deploying their Ooh. units. They're putting them mm -hmm. uh, in front and behind each other, whereas we've seen Blue4 do more of a lateral battle line. And that's been causing Op4 to kind of uh, just keep their forces in narrow positions. And Blue4, because they're responding with that battle line. Great grenade throw by Sento, by the way, killing Flanagan there. But yeah, yeah. it's just a great example of, you know, bat oh, hold up. Healing, getting a flank and killing Sergio there. Of Ooh, uh, McPherson lines and columns. Sento Sento. Oh, takes up McPherson, gets great a hit pull on out Hog. by Hog, yep. Yeah, but good perseverance. He has to bandage up. But just, you know, I, I feel like Op4 is putting themselves in a few situations where it feels like a fatal funnel, too, with how far you see the infantry back and front. That's allowing Blue4 to quickly acquire new targets and take them out. And that's why I think we're seeing Op4 respawning more than Blue4. But if you just look at the player statistics right now, uh, Blue4's two defenders, Ben and Duke, are at the bottom of the leaderboard here. 
But that, that's that's understandable. That's well, no, no, me, so defensive. Yep, but let me explain. Yeah, exactly, because mm -hmm. they are purely playing defense. And then you have all of Op4 above those two, but I think that's only because the two guys that are dedicated to playing defense, uh, Franco and I think it's actually just been uh, Franco, and I've seen John Miller going back and forth here. Lopez has been there a little bit too. Mm hmm. Um, they're kind of switching off, but they don't have anyone playing a dedicated defensive group here. Now it's Franco and John Miller, but I think because yeah. of that more loose strategy that Op4 is doing, instead of committing to those, uh, you know, specific roles per match, uh, that is also kind of costing Op4 a little bit. So a way to think about it with the bottom guys who are defending is every mm -hmm. kill they get is a literally uh, like a point touch. defense. Yeah. Yeah. It's a point defense. Every, um, they stop someone from possibly getting the flag. But I mean, look at these KDs right now. I mean, Hog at 20 and 6 on top. I mean, that just goes to show you. And he just got another... Oh, wait, no, that was McPherson getting a kill on Rackness from literally... It's a pretty long-distance shot, at least half the distance of the map itself. But I do like what Keeling's doing right now. He's holding here, trying to wait for forces to come up. Flanagan gets taken out by Sergio. Otherwise, Sento, I think, just got dropped by McPherson and Hog. It was McPherson that got the kill, but, I mean, it's good to be able to extrapolate the data of the leaderboard here, but, you know, the points are... The score points are like this because the Blue Four just seems to be slightly more aggressive, uh, but also having some slightly better strat um, tactics here in their PvP. I think Keeling just tried to kill Arachnus. He just exposed himself, so he's going to make yeah, a run for it. He knows people like to camp in that shed, so he's going to now hide in there. Rackness and Franco coming back, healing, trying Franco to look around. A grenade in there and he'd be done, mm -hmm. he'd be cooked. But I also do like the transition here where we're only seeing Keeling now going aggressive. Blue Force transition to having much more guys on defense now because they have this massive point lead. Uh, and the only way Op4 is going to be able to counter that is if they put so many people on offense to counter the, you know, five people on defense. Keeling going for a swipe at Sento there, but misses his shots. Rackness, Sento, Franco, all occupied with uh, dealing with this guy. Rackness, he pushes up. John, he's coming in, immediately dropped as soon as he gets back into the AO. Mm. Sergio, meanwhile, was right next to the flag, but he was taken out by the defensive units there. Keeling still taking cover There's, There's the grenade, grenade throw. That's right. uh, That's yeah, that forces Keeling to push. He gets the kill, but then he's flanked uh, and taken yeah, out by Lopez. Lopez. Gets him. But here comes Hog on the far flank. He might find Franco from this angle, as well as Lopez. So he gets Franco and Lopez in a great spray First and coming around as well. Op4 doesn't have anyone on defense right now. They're here quickly Sergio. rushing Sergio and John Miller. Yeah, there's a great frag. Bounces off the far. Hog gets the there. flag. No, it was great McPherson job. that got it. Great Sergio. frag there. Very nice. Good double kill. Stopping the flag. Well, that's another touch. That is another touch. But as long as if Seals can get two scores, mm -hmm. then it, it, the touches won't matter. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. I I don't think the Seals are going to be able to get the two touch uh, two flag points on here. I think their best bet is to when the round switch realize where Blue Four had those really good defensive spots and either attempt to use them or come up with some on their own. Because I feel like. Uh, the, I'm going to go with Cardinal Directions, Eastern side is slightly uh, better to defend compared to the Western, just because the Eastern is a little more open, there's more spots and angles you can cover the flag from, and the Western so, one just feels uh, a little more cramped to me. To so a little bit more information about the scoring system, mm -hmm. uh, it is cumulative. So, yep. obviously, first half, say... Uh, 16th AA, they get one flag score this round. Next round, um, SEALs are going to need to get two scores if they mm -hmm. want to win the match because they need to overcome the one score that AA got in the mm -hmm. first half. I think they can do it, though, because if Blue Force is only able to get, you know, one point on the board here at 16 AA, uh, that means they're going to have to defend that AO a little bit harder, but we could still see uh, the SEALs on Op4 really change up their tactics here. But we're not going to be able to know that until the next round starts. So four and a half minutes remaining. I think if 16 AA on Blue 4 could get one more flag capture, uh, they're looking really steady for actually winning this entire match here for their first round. We will see. And this is a double elimination, so mm -hmm. um, the seals similar lose to this FNF match, Titans. They have a, uh, yeah, there'll be a losers bracket that they can uh, redeem themselves in. Mm -hmm. McPherson redeeming himself for uh, right there. 
Great shot on Arachnus, and he's going looking to open up this AO or the the flag along with Hog. I'm gonna be honest though, if you open the scoreboard, you'll just see the kill counts are kind of double for the four blue yeah, four it's, players. It's, wild. it's it's 88 total kills to 45 on Op4, and a wild grenade just got Sento and Lopez. It didn't say who killed them though. <laughs> I don't know where that was thrown, but damn. Huh. Ooh, good shot from Rackness there again. Yep. Franco suppressing as well. And there's Hog from behind taking out uh, Miller, and they are confused, as well as Franco. Mm -hmm. Rackness there makes it a threesome. Hog and on Hog top now. of the flag position, though. I think he's going to wait it out for a second. You see he's crouched, he's watching, but you can hear the footsteps around him. Um... Yeah, so I think he um, he had the timer going in his head and was expecting reinforcements to be coming mm -hmm. in soon. And he was right. Sento and Lopez pushing along that southern flank. But now here comes Sergio and Miller. And I bet you they're going to be really confused as to why I, that flag is still there. I think Hog is waiting for someone to come back him up because he thought there were more yeah. forces around. So if he went to try to take that flag, yeah, he was yeah, worried there absolutely. was someone still up to take him. So I agree with this strategy here. This also lets Op4 start deploying their forces out farther to get to the flag location. Hog finding Franco takes him out. Keeling coming around. John f uh, heard those shots. He's running back. Rackness also heard those shots. Hog going to be in the open here. But he gets Can't shot before get touching the flag because John poked his gun out to look. But Keeling now in a position. Yep. Only uh, a couple minutes left now. Yep, two come in. But Op4 just lost a few guys. So they're going to be respawning and coming in. So that's going to make this just a little bit tougher. Uh, we just saw Keeling get taken out as well. I think this is going to be a 1-0. Uh, so far as we go into round two. Pearson doing a great job hitting Rockness there, but I don't know, two minutes, him versus everyone respawning. I mean, he gets a second kill there. We could see it. AT fired. And first and taken out by uh, Lopez there. On this map, those uh, rockets are actually really useful because they can destroy the barracks buildings. So we see the one that Ben is in and the one that... Uh, uh, Rockness is going past now. Those yep. buildings can be damaged and destroyed. Lopez taken out by Flanagan. Uh, to uh, eliminate uh, defensive positions. Hog, I think, noticed Miller coming around. Keenigan's going to catch him out in the open, though, and nice. takes him out. Again, it's just the level of play that you're seeing Blue 4 uh, 16 AA doing compared to the SEALs on Op 4. Just Blue 4's tactics of the battle line. Blue 4 just stopping and listening for those footsteps, keeping their gun steady. But if they hear the footsteps behind them, they're, they're quick to turn around. I feel like there's communication, though, because when I see one person notice a guy across the map, I instantly see the guy near the op for contact turn and start focusing in that direction. So I just feel like there's better cohesion overall with 16 AA for this round on top of the fact that their AO is just slightly better on the defensive side because it's a little more open. There's a few more hidey holes, yeah, but I think it's more, more maze like mm -hmm. over there. I'd be curious to see though, how these guys attack that AO next round. Yes. With this cohesion. Uh, so you got Keeling covering. He immediately catches John Miller. Gets wounded because he wasn't able to land a kill as quickly as he wanted to. 30 seconds remaining. Op4 still has a chance to score here. Rackness might get a flag touch, but we still have Duke and Ben on defense as he goes. I don't think there's overtime. I think 30 seconds mm -hmm. here is going to be it. Franco's, uh, Flanagan's going to go for it. Gets the touch. Rackness and is immediately shot in the back. And he gets just double teamed there, Duke and Ben, mm. both. Just shredding him. Three seconds. And that is it. Game is over. AA getting one capture, five touches. Navy ESP unable to get anything, but I think that was a great first round. It was a great showcase. Both sides did really well, in my opinion. But AA just had um, slightly better cohesion overall. Oh, they have a little victory thing <laughs> with a little middle finger flick off. That's hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just yeah, the, the kill counts here with a 3.5 KD. Ben technically with a 4.0 on defense, but he never died. But, you know, just pure defense there. But look at that. 53 deaths to 112. I mean, that's good. God. Two to one. Mm. But, no you know, it was getting a positive KD. Point-wise, it was that divided 
but just to get one capture on the flag. That's how yeah. brutal this has to be. That's why I have the touch system for the flag to determine tiebreakers. Because I'm going to be honest, I remember from uh, covering this event back in, I want to say, 2019. The, um, what should I call it? Uh, it was it, it was really rare to see a flag capture. It was always down to touches for most of the rounds, and that was like three years ago when I last covered this event. So we'll see how things go. But anyway, Barb, I want to say thank you again for inviting me to this event to cover of it. Of course, of course. And um, just one question on the AHK. Chat's not going to get this, but we're probably going to switch to the um, the one labeled number three instead of number two for the next round, right? Huh? Never mind. I'll ask. <laughs> uh, no, you, uh, the, uh, it stays the same. You don't have to do anything with it now. Uh, what you do need to do, though, is for in-game round two, you need to manually put the scores from this round. So it's going to be one gotcha. five. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I'll make sure that is set up uh, while we're doing the transition. Yep. So it's going to be a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So uh, I will state also to chat, um, they have their own custom streamer package, which is why you're seeing some of those uh, fancy uh, turnarounds and whatnot. I just realized my title might also be scuffed. That's funny. How did that get changed? Oh, I think I know why. There we go. All right, we're on a five-minute break, so I'm going to do a quick transition. Go for it. All right. We have a few fun little things in the background here. Uh, hmm. I'm debating if I want to play any music or if I just want to chill. I think we'll just chill. Um, so we're going to be covering two rounds today, uh, this one and then another one. I think that's going to be it for us, right? Uh, yes, yeah, it's going to be two games today. I'm not sure what the second one is, obviously, because mm -hmm. the, the match is still being played, so we'll see. Yep, we won't know until uh, people win to see uh, who's yeah, pushing until through. win or lose, yeah. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we can uh, just go along and chill. You know, I am going to play some music. Screw it. Let's see. What is on the docket here? I'll do Snow Warriors. Screw it. Just to play something in the transition here. We're not doing red alert. All righty. But anyway, guys, thank you for joining me. So we're going to be covering this for, uh, you know, the next few hours. And then I want to say at... I'm debating. 8.39, we'll be back on the ground playing another Project Tension operation. That one, I think, is going to be quite fun because uh, that's where we have all the custom scripts. Last week, we were playing with the Leaper gene and jumping around uh, as well as um, a PDA to call in airstrikes and, uh, you know, napalm, no, um, phosphorus bombs and all that fun stuff. So that'll be at about nine. Uh, tomorrow, we have Checkpoint RP. Uh, I'm also going to see if I can find some time to play DayZ because I've been told sometime today Frost Server is going to go live on the DayZ, uh, the new DayZ build, excuse me. And we will, uh, you know, hopefully have all of that to go with. So we'll see. We'll see how everything goes. Also, if you look in the Twitch channel, I made a schedule for uh, all of the Arma stuff I'm doing weekly. I'm also going to manually input uh, custom events like um, Fricky Frack, uh, Checkpoint RP, MCO, all that fun stuff, and then anything else that I think is, uh, you know, needed to be custom. But we'll see how things go in that regard. I'm planning, though, for... Um, for the DayZ server you've seen me going on, I think we're going to probably do that on Fridays. So once a week on that, maybe uh, at least after the NA branch. But I'm thinking maybe as a transition between EU and NA. But that's also when I usually have dinner. So it'll just be a spur of the moment for uh, that one, which is why it's not specifically listed in the stream. But in terms of on Frost server, I haven't been able to pinpoint a dedicated time yet because I've been busy with all of uh, the other stuff here. So 
Anyway, uh, going over the roster, uh, not roster, excuse me, the image that we have right here, I find it all really funny. So um, we've got their custom interface, which I'm actually really in love with. I might actually try to make, uh, have someone make something like this for me. Uh, just because I, I find this really cool. Uh, and I was having a buddy of mine tell me that I needed something like this. I didn't think this is what he meant. But, my God, I, I see it now. I absolutely love it. But anyway, it looks like the round is starting to go into uh, the next one. So I'm going to tab out here. We're going to go ahead, pause the music. Let's go ahead and transition. See, I mean, that's beautiful. That is honestly freaking beautiful. All right, Barb, looks like the round is starting up. So we'll uh, go ahead and get it covered. So this is what it looks like up top. And again, I think it's going to be the storage site. Uh, again, uh, we're going to have... Yes, it's going to be the same map again. 16 AA on op four. Yep. It is the same site, same mm -hmm. everything, just sides are Side switched. So just as a note, um because I don't think the script does it automatically. Uh for the map sake, blue four on the uh OBS is gonna be op four, and then you know, op four is gonna be blue four. So <laughs> just a something I didn't think about, but also, you know, I don't think the uh, the script automatically does it, so uh, something to think about next time. We're seeing a bit of a yellow chain, red chain? Question mark. Uh, red chain, yeah. Uh, you just got disconnected and the red chain went away. All right. Um, <laughs> it was okay, barbarian, uh, everyone. Barbarian was the red chain reason. <laughs> uh, just get back on real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll hop back on. That's actually kind of funny. I think the server had a hiccup because I noticed it was loading a bunch of stuff, so maybe it just freaked out beforehand. We should be a okay. Server's fine. No, yeah, uh, they're waiting good. for you to come back, bro. So, um, whatever. Oh, image rectangle.paa wasn't found. That must have been the reason. Ah, uh, maybe just kicked out because something uh, loaded before the file for it loaded, and it just decided to unga bunga you, according to Falcon. Yeah, it happens. So, uh, going over everything, ah, look, see, Ben is drawing this amazing plan here. He actually wants to leave the map boundary and then flank that way. What a, what an interesting uh, strategy Very we're seeing come in here. But it looks like round is starting. We are starting in the middle. Now we've got Op4, who is going to be uh, AA. Uh, I'm just calling Air Assault AA at this point because it's easier for me to yeah, remember. Hey. And then Blue4 is going to be uh, Navy. This is round two. Uh, points got reset you got, got the air versus the navy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so uh they're gonna get a few um about a minute here to uh uh change their gun so you can go uh look at them in their spawn and once they get their rifles you'll see them flip through it just like that so mm -hmm. we'll see them all the guns oh. they can pick so they have full choice whatever gun they want they can bring mm -hmm. uh NATO, AAF, CSAT, they can bring double barrel shotguns, they can bring, I think the, uh, even the contact rifle is I get what they're going too. for here, so it's supposed to be this one. The, the grot or whatever. Uh, they are going to be doing that, and here we go with the round starting. And that's and supposed three, to be down two, there. One. And that's supposed to have the previous points loaded. Gotcha. Okay, but that's not, they're not coming up, and I didn't preset the names that way. Okay. So I just realized there's a in-game round one and an in-game round two. So round two is supposed to be played now, and it's supposed to have the scores from the previous round on that, but now my RP, um, the AHK file isn't working, and I thought that would be match two, not round two, which is why I didn't preset it. So I'll just have a uh, comment. I'll, I'll know for the next match at least and be able to preset that <laughs> while we're in the intermission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll uh, go ahead and get those uh, two things split over. It was all a little good, difficult because um, Navy ESP was supposed to be another community, but two communities last second had to pull out of the uh, tourney so that we had to get a bunch of replacement logos down and everything. But otherwise, we have Air Assault on one side, ESP on the other. Uh, and I also think the logo is missing. But, yeah, no, I'll, um, during the transition, I'll get all that fixed no for worries, round two. No worries, Just so, ironing out a few technical uh, issues, real, you know? Real quick, uh, good aggression coming out from uh, the SEALs. Lots mm -hmm. of it on the north side. We saw them push really hard and get a couple kills, but Keeling going to be the last uh, man standing up here on the north side for that firefight. We also have on the south side Sergio and Flanagan, both kind of just... Uh, 
in a bit of stalemate distance. here. Sergio's Ooh, gonna Flanagan. breach and clear that corner though against Flanagan. No, oh. he doesn't commit. No, I don't think he saw Flanagan pull back there. Flanagan's kind of doing this feel uh, creepy like, and Sergio is on the same wavelength, mm -hmm. it seems. But Sergio get... just didn't see Flanagan there or safety. something. No, his gun was on safety. He just Why, was there a click? Him. I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't explain it, dude. That's oh, so man. Think just, I think just in the heat of the moment, sometimes your brain doesn't process things, and then it just yeah, yeah. hits you like that. But already we're seeing AA on uh, the offensive side here pushing in. It's a little down the middle, but they're crossing that halfway point. It's just a little Ooh. tough to call. Rackness coming around, taking first and out because Ferguson was completely out of position. I do like Duke. Duke. All the way back here. It's yeah. a great Walk lockdown position. Or 117 or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Hog getting blown away by a grenade. Uh, Miller's grenade, so he did a good toss of that over the wall. Mm -hmm. Keeling's looking up here, though, and might spite John, um, might spot him <laughs> and spite him as well hmm. as he pushes around around that truck. Yep. Great drop Great by Keeling there. there. And now Flanagan getting pushed by Sergio and Lopez. And I think he heard those steps. Sergio yeah, Flanagan around. comes around, gets Flanagan. He gets a great shot. That's going to open up a little bit. And as he crosses out here, Sergio going to miss uh, Keeling's gaze there. Mm -hmm. And they're going to skirt around the exterior wall. So, so, so far, so really good by. start from uh, the Seals. We see him playing with Franco and Sento again on defense. Rockness trying to draw some attention on the north side. He's got a bit of... Uh, a, oh, and then he's a, dropped yeah. immediately by Hog. Yeah, very good shot there. Yeah, um, AA, they're really stacking this northern side. Mm -hmm. Flanagan and Ben here going to be an even 2v2. As Flanagan pushes around, he's going to be very suspicious clearing everything. And as he comes up to this building, and he even gets the double. How does he do Flanagan it? Got Flanagan got both? Flanagan. He got both. Damn. And, and Sergio had the first shot. He got he hit himself. And just, yep, quickly bandaging. So you got to remember for Vanilla Medical, when you uh, use a first aid kit, it only brings you up to 80% of your health. So you're permanently crippled until you can find a medic unit to do it. But there's no medics here. No, there's no medics. There's no specialty. The rockets that you hear sometimes go off. Uh, those are at a box at their spawn mm -hmm. that uh, comes back uh, periodically. Mm -hmm. They also have so they have an RPG-42 with a rock with one rocket. Mm -hmm. They get a Mark 200 LMG and a uh, the uh, intervention, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So some extra heavy weapons in case they need them. Rockness yeah. trying to cross, gets into a fight with Hog, and Rockness is able to get they one trade, shot yeah. out, and they did a nice trade. Keeling's trying to make a play up the middle now. So good start from both sides on this mm -hmm. uh, on this round, honestly. Again, I've, I've been really seeing impressive stuff from Seals. Op4 being a little more aggressive. Again, they're 16 AA. Uh, Seals have been also getting some good aggressive pushes. But again, the fact they're keeping their forces a little too close is allowing opportunities for AA to get some double kills here and there. We already saw one by Flanagan, and I think that's what's causing Blue Ford to then get pushed back here. So we need to see... Oh, Rockness getting friendly fired there by Lopez. Lopez just with a great flick mm. shot, but on the wrong person and gets punished for it but, um, through karma, thanks to Keeling. Planning to get taken out by Sergio on the southern side. Now, this is a little dangerous, though. Uh, Miller just got taken out by Keeling. Sergio, I think, just got Fearson. Yeah, that's a double. Can you get a triple on Hog? Nope, no, Hog stops can't. him. Keeling coming around, catches Rockness in the middle of the lane, takes him out. A little worried here because we've got Sento behind that wall. Keeling being oh, really cautious, Lopez takes one. Lopez he's... out. Sento, he's moving. The... Great oh. headshot by Sento there as Keeling was sprinting. Keeling, it looked like he was checking all the positions where in the previous round his team was defending, but he didn't think that this uh, spot Sento was in would be obviously taken. 
because yeah. it's just right on top of it. So uh, I do like that blue four. They know where uh, the previous blue four uh, was garrisoned, but now they're doing different spots to try to throw AA off guard here. I think that's a great uh, call there. Absolutely. And yeah, just in general, those reverse defensive positions where mm -hmm. uh, you have to really expose yourself to a lot of other oh, places if you want to check it. Flanagan up, friendly firing McPherson here. That's going to give map control to Blue for the Seals. So Hog is really far up ahead. He let Lopez go past, held his uh, fire. So now mm. he's going to sneak up. He might clear out this barracks building. Uh, Smoke grenade no, thrown. Like he's going to go for it. Lopez taken out by Flanagan, but then Flanagan immediately taken out by that? Sergio. No, he did. Oh, he just saw that barrel of Sento turned around, and Hog is going to get gets the, first, the touch. Uh, point. So he's going to have pretty much uh, free reign now, as most of Blue Four is actually on the other side of the map. We have I think Lopez Franco's going to look down. Hog Ooh, catches Sergio. Sergio, but Franco might get a key hold through the fuel truck. He does not. So can Rackness and John turn left? Frank now immediately charges this position. There's a thing in the way. Healing's going to yeah, be watching the rear of Hog. He has an AT launcher. And now Hog's going to hug this one spot. Healing now watching the rear. We could still see an intercept here with Rackness and Miller. Ben covering this one position. And if they hold the flag, then they cannot capture. Mm-hmm. If the flag is away, they cannot catch him. Hog's going to make a run for it, but he's going to get immediately stopped and yes. taken out. They are going to stop him. Ben, ben immediately killing Rackness before he can touch it. Ooh, flag, flag is still is in play. Be... Ben gets the kill. John Miller desperately trying to defend, but he is taken. Lopez coming around, gets blown up by a grenade, but Lopez also dies to the grenade. Franco doing his best to take him out, but Flanagan coming on the rear. Flag oh, is flag taken. Get reset. And Duke. No one touched the flag in time. A. That was a, such a tough fight. Oh, Just look at all the bodies God. around here. That was such a tough fight. Holy crap. Yeah, so I I Great scuffed it, Flash. That's on me. I'll make sure round two um, or match two, I have it set correctly because it just dinged on me what the second round page was for. So that's on me. That is completely on me. So it's it's navy on blue, 16 air on red, and the uh, this thing right here is also. Hog. Uh, Hog and I don't gonna know why that's not deploying Rackers, properly you either. Hear that gunfire. Sergio gonna be able to touch the flag. He gets it. He's gonna run right to Keeling though, but he gets shot in the back by Duke. That is still a touch for Seals. That's mm -hmm. their first scored point of the uh, of the match itself. I thought they got a flag touch last time. Did they not? No, uh, ah. Seals got nothing last round. Mm. Again, that information is supposed to be deployed right here, but for whatever reason, my uh, my uh, hotkey thing isn't uh, covering that, so I'll have to look into that in, uh, in intermission when we get to the next server. But I swear, it'll all be fixed. It's just teething issues. <laughs> like I had I, said, I had 24 hours to set all this up. It was very last minute, but yeah, you know what? You Screw got, it. Why not? You, you had 24 hours, and realistically, you had maybe three hours of help, <laughs> to, to figure it all out, so I'll, I'll take what I can get. Overlays, Great grenade the... throw. Miller trying to get away. Still, oh, nope, didn't do any damage. No, he's good. Now, another crazy thing to note here, there's no body armor. There's no helmets. If you get shot, you get shot. <laughs> two two or three body shots to the center, one to the face, you're done. So it's Ooh, well, another hog, friendly fire by Op4. Yeah, Keeling, very quick on that trigger, takes on Hog. Bit of friendly fire. I think we only saw one friendly fire last round, but this one, it's I've just been... Like four or five this round. Yeah. Right? Rackness with a great run and spray. Mm-hmm. And here's Duke watching this keyhole. And Sergio there getting uh, a friendly fire nade onto Rackness. That's uh, really unfortunate. It's like the fifth one now. <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm going to be honest. The first round, we saw a little bit more coordination, especially by uh, 16 AA. Now yeah. it's kind of just a free for all at this point. We're seeing some pretty heavy aggression, but I'm not really sure what else we're going to see. I mean, Op4, we see a lot of them respawning right now. So maybe 16 AA will use this opportunity to reform about a battle line to 10 push minutes in. Minutes or so passed by now. Mm -hmm. So about 20 minutes left. But. 
we might also see them just default to defense because they're up two flags technically because it's the previous round added to the current round. So they're up like two captures, five touches to uh, ESM or excuse me, ESP that has uh, only one touch total, no captures. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a massive transition to defense by uh, Na uh, excuse me, uh, 16 AA. Uh, but we'll just have to see what happens here. And I do agree, the Seals are definitely doing a lot better. But when we look at the actual statistics here... Ooh, uh, that rocket! Did it hit a oh, friendly? Again. How much friendly fire is going to be on this round? Like, damn! What's really funny is that Sento, the blue four guy in the building, <laughs> is completely unscathed. He's fine, but the freaking He's rocket fine. killed a friendly. My so that's what goodness! I mean, rockets being useful for destroying some uh, some structures. Mm -hmm. So that uh, now th that part of the building they won't be able to use as easily. And yeah, the uh, the Spaniards, you know, if they really are, if they're able to bring this back, they'll get my seal of approval. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just might, but. Again, uh, we got 16 AI on Op4, encroaching on the flag position. Blue 4 ESP starting to respawn here Ooh, and fold great in. shot from Hog onto Ascento there, across the way. Miller's gotten the uh, RPG HE rounds out. Not sure when he'll deploy them. He now enters the zone. Healing is now coming back up into the barracks and building. he's immediately he's dropped. Good flank. Flanagan should be able to come in from the north now and try and capture that flag. We also have McPherson. A lot of Rackness pressure gets taken out. Flanagan comes around, gets Lopez too. Great double kill. Lots of pressure on the Spaniards now. Yeah. As they to make another touch. Here comes McPherson. Going to look for a play. Pearson gets taken out by Sento. Keeling's also dead in the barracks. It's just Flanagan here now for Red 4. Hog is in a nice overwatch position to watch this open area. You got Sento coming around that corner. Flanagan pushes him. John Miller coming around the rear. Could stop him. Flanagan gets the flag. He gets the touch at least, but Franco then takes him out. Yep, so they'll be and able the to And the flag is returned. That. Yep. At this point, um, yeah, SEALs are definitely going to need to get, at, the, um, at this point, three uh, scores if they want to try and win. They're not going to be able to uh, win with two scores because mm -hmm. of the, the tiebreaker rules. So they're going to want that third one. To get three, though, in the next 16 minutes, Barb, I don't see it. The way that both sides are playing. Sergio trying to hit Keeling in the back gets the kill. And I think he got uh, McPherson as well. So great double kill. We actually might see the start of it here. He's going to have to get more. But Ben and Duke just, you know, dedicated to defense today. They haven't yeah. really let anything slide except for one single touch between both rounds so far. And even then, that didn't get far. Mm-hmm. I'm watching it. Miller and Rackness both getting taken out immediately by Ben and McPherson, uh, respectively. Sergio's going to be the last one up here for Blue 4, so he he's facing up against 5 Red 4. That grenade almost took him out if it was on uh, a little bit further from the, around the box. Mm-hmm. Hog trying to come around. He's really favored these northern corners here. He has the RPG as well. Not sure if he's used it yet. Sergio, meanwhile, coming around, gets Flanagan again. Gets into a firefight with Ben. Yeah, and so he's trying Sergio, to... Sergio, I think, think spots so. Duke, tries to keyhole him. Neither Ooh, side's able to get the kill. Duke. Duke got hit, but he's still up. Now Ben's trying to flank around. The League, thanks so much for the 24 Flanagan months resub, man. I don't have those pop-ups going three. for this interface because of this uh, special event, but hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. And righto, Hobo Hobbit. I hope you keep enjoying everything, man. Seriously, it means a lot. Thank you for dropping by and letting me know. Because it's people like you that tell me that. that Ooh, Sergio, I don't think his bore was keep clearing me going that with box. All, in all honesty. Yeah, you can so see thank all the, you, seriously. All the rounds just heading into that top left corner. Mm -hmm. So Duke is able to take him out really easily. Or Flanagan, excuse me. Appreciate it. Seriously, it means a lot. Whew, all right. Minutes left now. Sorry for the radio silence there. 14 minutes. 
No um, we saw Sergio get close to the flag, but he was taken out by the defenses. We got Keeling and McPherson up here again, uh, trying to hold Rackness going into the open doorway, getting taken out by Keeling. I mean, just looking at the point totals here again, Op4 is just staying double ahead of Blue4 in terms of kill counts here. And I think it's really showing for this scenario. Ooh, Franco had a little bit of a uh, height advantage. I don't think Keeling expected that. And that, uh, Gave a uh, half-second hesitation for Franco to get the kill there. Oh, here comes Miller. He's got the rocket. Is he going to use it, though? Stay with me. Rocket, rocket. And no effect. No effect, he, unfortunately. I, I, yeah, it landed low and hit the, the containers. <laughs> Those are really great for clearing out certain areas, but... You got to position it properly. And I'm going to be honest, yeah. both sides have been way too fast paced for rockets to be utilized effectively. The only time I saw it get a kill was uh, the friendly kill a few minutes ago, you know? Right. You're having this long range fight between Hog and Franco here. Oh, I hear the machine gun out. Yeah, I think that's Keeling that has it. Yep, Keeling has that Mark 200. And here comes Lopez on the left side of Keeling. Now he peeks out, shreds him. Mm. Miller's going to look for an opening. The, the one issue with them killing all the blue four guys that are currently attacking is that's going to put pressure on Hog and Flanagan to get this uh, flag here. Hog suppressing up, unable to get Franco in that doorway. You got Sento camping over here. I think Franco actually just got shot by Flanagan. As now Hog is trying to come around here, might catch Rackness out of position. Ooh, friendly fire. McPherson getting dropped by Keeling. But that's just unfortunate. Little burst. So that's going to make Miller's job a little bit easier. Still has a 1v3 to deal with as he's flanking around the back. Flanagan gets Lopez. Oh, but he's on single fire. He mm. manages to get Duke, but uh, Keeling there. Flanagan gets Duncan Sento. He's only got to stop Sergi here. He gets Sergi. Hold on. He, I think he has a completely clear area here. He's going to be able to get the flag and run. Franco accidentally blows himself up with his own grenade. <laughs> How the fuck do you even manage that? <laughs> he was All the right, closest yeah, guy to Flanagan here. The fucking deal. I, yeah, they're going to be up three points between this round and the previous round. I think 16 AA has this, in all honesty. That's two seal puns now that you fucking just missed. I, I'm, okay, you know what? I sealed the deal? Come sealed on. The de I'm so sorry. Keeling spraying down. Rackness gets the... Uh, Kill there again. Apologies that my scoreboard's a bit screwed up. I will there. make sure that doesn't happen again. But yeah, I'm pretty That's sure it's point there for AA. Yeah. it's two points this round. With the previous round, it's three points total. I I think this is a stomp out. So we're gonna see 16 AA push through. There's still 10 minutes remaining. We could see Blue Four do a massive turnaround, okay, but they okay. have to get four points. Um minute or two and a half minutes per point on average there to get through. I I don't see it because that just means Blue 4 is going to magically start stomping out Op 4 here. We're going to see the uh, the aim bots immediately come out. But Flanagan getting Sento there. But the, what a what a beautiful play followed by a little bit of a fumble there, in my opinion. Right. Franco taken out by McPherson. But again, it's just showing on the leaderboard here. You know, 2-1 to one in terms of KD right now and the differences. And great, just great. McPherson gets Gunther another kill by McPherson. Lopez. He almost gets Rackness there, too. Rackness took a sweet See, time in but uh, landing that spray. It's important to note what we just saw there. McPherson immediately tried to go for a sprint. He shouldered his gun, got his gun up, but Rackness was already firing. And even though that firefight was a little more dragged out compared to the other two that we saw McPherson in win, um, he still wasn't able to then beat Rackness because Rackness already had his gun trained on him, which just goes to show that both sides are really, really skilled here. They're able to get the kill in under a second. And if the kill goes yep. to over a second, it's just a matter of who was firing first. Almost always is going to get the kill here. Speaking, yeah. I'm being told 16th AA is winning most of the time in CQC tournaments like these. Understandably so. One, yeah, they, they've really shown their worth. One thing I have noticed as a bit of a weakness, because Flanagan just fell for this again, is they overcomplicate themselves a little bit. They don't expect the really obvious defensive areas to actually be utilized, and that is one of the saving graces we're seeing with Navy ESP right now on Blue 4, because they are just 
constantly using that little spot right next to the flag, and Op4 just keeps sprinting past it without properly checking it and getting gunned down every time. And I think that's preventing uh, Op4 from just getting any more points here. They still have the lead. They're still probably going to win because we have eight and a half minutes left, and they're above three points between the two rounds. Yeah, but uh, uh, Seal's going to have to score four points in order to um, uh, win this one. I feel like if someone were to analyze the previous round and see that, though, and people were to change their tactics on the fly, you might have a winning strategy against 16th AA here. Oh, here's Senta now with an opportunity to touch the flag. But yeah, Flanagan, but Ben. Yeah, Ben up, the, up top and Flanagan coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ben this really likes bad. utilizing the second stories of these barracks buildings. He did it in the first yep. round. He's doing it in the second, and it's showing really well. But I think 16 AA with those dedicated guys on defense, Ben, and who is the other one we normally see? Uh, I actually, Duke, I don't think... Duke, but they've been rotating Yeah, Duke's it, been um, being more aggressive here. I've been seeing Ben constantly playing the D, though. Giggity. Yeah. Uh, but it's Shut been up. it's been showing. What, the D has been showing? Uh, yes, the defense of 16 AA. And, I mean, oh my gosh, did Hog just get... No, it was Hog and Keeling utilizing their own little keyholes here to actually pick off quite a few people. Now I think they're going to know about this spot, but Hog did go down. The question is, can Keeling now get up here to uh, get another point, really Ooh, seal the Cento. deal? Cento. Yeah, Cento's just running back and forth. Keeling, yeah, he doesn't know that Keeling's... Uh... Oh, but he... No, Cento uh, got dropped with Keeling's, yep. I think, last couple of rounds. Mm -hmm. Just before the reload. He was low, too, because he was spraying him really hard. Mm -hmm. And here it comes from the other side, Lopez coming back around to try and clear out this McPherson heard coming. the freaking sprinting footsteps though that's another thing i've noticed that 16 aa currently on op4 uh has been really outperforming blue 4 esp on is they've been actively listening to these footsteps and reacting to them accordingly so uh, i think a great testament to a good pvp -er is if you're able to utilize noises that other players make other than gunshots and uh, utilize that to your advantage. Mainly footsteps in games like these. Good but shot from Sento. Sento caught him in a fatal boring. funnel. I mean, there wasn't a lot. Uh, there wasn't a lot of places to maneuver. Plus, Keeling was completely nope. in the open. Sento immediately peered his weapon really in. That's another thing I'm noticing both teams are doing is they're not actively coming around a corner. If they do, they get immediately gunned down. But we're seeing a lot of leaning back and forth, which helps minimize their profile. But even then, you just saw Flanagan do that against Sergio, and both sides are able to sometimes get the headshot and do that immediate trade too within those first two or three gunshots depending on which weapon they choose for fire rate so it's it's very close in some parts but the other parts we've mentioned is why 16 aa is just dominating here it's a few things in tactics and it's a few things in the gunplay i do like how esp's countering here and there but it's just not enough again john miller sprints around the corner duke heard the footsteps and gunned him down well duke before that he did hear the gunfire that was really close from when uh when uh, uh, John got the kill onto Ben. So he, he did have a bit more precognition than just the footsteps. But yeah, they are playing the sound very well, just in general. And a great triple kill. Flanagan, Keeling, and Duke Flanagan. all yeah. together. Uh, and Flanagan was killed by Keeling, though. Yes, Hold up. Blue 4 might be able to get a point here. That on, is exactly Lopez. what they need. Five and a half minutes remaining. What they need to so do look. now is have them escort, but they need to have one guy staying back here to stop it. Op4, yeah, they they're, need... there's no way they're going to be able to counter it. They got completely no. wiped okay, there. Here's, yeah, here's Sento and Rackness. Yeah, Rackness Sento uh, turning uh, around. Uh, Sergio's so going to cover uh, past Lopez. But yeah, no, keep Op4 box in their spawn. Can they get four points in five minutes? I doubt it. It's going to turn into three points in about four and a half, but they might be able to get close. It might be a really good bounce back. But with the amount of time and the skill level of both players, I don't think it'll be enough. The one issue Op4 did right there, there's the capture, is they all got taken down. bundled up in the middle, and that's why they were all taken out. Oh, yeah, all of Blue 4 got taken out, so this is not going to be a, a train Miller's still up here. But the one time uh, 16 AA bundled all their forces together, they got wiped out. So on that reinsert, you saw them literally envelop the AO and circle it, uh, and circle it, which is what they've normally been doing. And now that tactic's going to work for them. Hog, Hog and Lopez trading there in the middle. Flanagan waiting out Miller. Miller doesn't check the corner, and he oh, is taken out. That is, that is ratty. <laughs> Keeling getting taken out by Sento. Four minutes remaining. I think the final score is going to uh, 
definitely be in 16 AA's favor. But I'm glad Navy was able to get at least one capture to showcase the tactics of, you know, good compared to bad, uh, regardless of how well the gunplay on one team is. If you just get caught in a really bad situation mm -hmm. like that, uh, it doesn't matter how good you are, you will get screwed because both sides are very, very good, I think, regardless. I think that really does speak to uh, the SEALs' um, persistence there. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, that, that first round, it was a bit of a slog, but the second round started off well, but once uh, AA got those two points, it was uh, a much bigger hill for them mm -hmm. to climb up. But they're still trying. Like, they're still going for this, and they mm -hmm. got one score at the least, so they could uh, make it even for this round. Mm -hmm. And I guess a group like 16th AA, that is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that grenade onto Keeling. Is it going to pop? No, it bounced a little bit too far. You know, they're getting a great flank on Hog because Hog got tunnel vision on Sento. But see, when you have two people working in a bit of a battle line instead of a column and they're able to support each other like that, they can easily outflank even what I would consider the best player today uh, being Hog because he was really aggressive in the first round. He's now tied with Flanagan in the second, but just in terms of uh, raw KD. Yeah, and here comes Sento and Miller again from the South Duke. Just charges that corner and Duke's corners. able to get him, but because he went full sprint, uh, Duke wasn't able, or excuse me, Sento wasn't able to get any shots off. Miller getting a good shot onto Ben or trying to, and Hog is going to come. Hog's going to. Oh, that grenade bounces a little bit further in. Hog's waiting for him to poke out, and there it is, there and he gets is. the kill on John Miller. And about two and a half minutes or so left on the clock. So again, good show from Seals against uh, what some people might say are the uh, favorites for the tournament. Mm -hmm. But in the end, 16th AA going to be advancing to the semis. So it is important to note Seals are one of the groups that replaced uh, another last second. Yes, that so, is absolutely worth noting. 16 AA did have a lot of time to train for this event. This is what I'm being told by uh, Flash Ranger, who's one of the administrators for this type of event. Uh, but with that, it, it does show. But again, I think both sides just, are just showing a really good skill level here overall. Having a long range fight here. Hog trying to poke out, get some hits on Miller. I think he crippled Miller. Meanwhile, in the north, we heard some shots go out. Uh, that was Sergio getting taken out. But it looks like Keeling, who was prone under a truck. But one minute remaining. Uh, I, I think it's over. No, it absolutely is. Rockness is going to try and make a bit more of a play, but I think that is going to be the end of the round here in just a minute. Hog, again, holding steady here. At this point, I don't think he's playing Good. to be super aggressive in terms of movement. He's just holding himself in this uh, southern row, stopping anyone from coming up. Great kills here. You see a rocket get launched out for anything more. 30 seconds remaining. Serio coming around. Hog hears the footsteps. Rocket whiffed There's over. Takes the building finally. out. Finally. And Hog gets taken out. Yep. Rockets. That isn't friendly fire. Yep. And Franco getting taken out by a rocket. The whole entire barracks is blown up. Yeah. I would think that would be on one of the first things you need to do that is blow up the barracks buildings. Because do or excuse me, Ben on uh, 16 AA has been capitalizing on both. Mm -hmm. Planning and getting caught That's out. Tries to pre-fire around. Uh, then Sergio getting taken out by Keeling, who is just pushing with that uh, Mark 200. And that is going to be it. I believe 16 AA have won the first round. So Navy ESP is going to get knocked to the loser bracket. Again, similar system to uh, FNF Titans, where if you lose the overall match, you get to the loser bracket. And then the loser bracket, uh, if you get eliminated from there, you um, are out of the tournament period. So it's, uh, what is it, double elimination? Yes, double elimination. Mm -hmm. So the SEALs will be sent to the loser's bracket, and they will have a chance to fight for, um, I believe, third place. Again, Hog on top of the leaderboard, and yes, it is a fight for third place there. So good game overall. Uh, we're going to go, at least for me, to the Be Right Back screen. Uh, I'm going to recalibrate everything because we don't know who the round two guys are going to be till then. And I might have to put up if it's one of the new communities and I had to get their stuff in last second. Uh, I'll have to recalibrate all that. So we'll play some music and we'll we go uh, AFK.